So I have now uh, completed the second uh, set of objectives to um, change the starter motor and I'm at the point where I'm just about to um, remove the starter motor and I just wanted to include notes on uh, what I've actually taken out so far. And so basically the engine is now uh, lowered uh, on one side and I've taken the two bolts that hold the uh, starter motor together and I thought just before I take those take the uh, starter motor out I'll just include on what I had to do to get to um, the starter motor so basically I had to remove all these uh, different uh, parts in order to get to the starter motor uh, the very first one I had to remove was uh, this pipe here uh, which basically connects to the throttle body and the uh, throttle body basically connects to um, Connects to down here and put some light. So um, It connects there. That's where the throttle body was and the pipe coming from the throttle body um, goes into the um, Intercooler which connects there. So I removed this pipe that was the very first thing I did. Uh, relatively easy, not too difficult. Um, I did have to actually loosen both sides so that it could actually come off. Uh, if you just loosen one side, it's not. It's not. There's no flexibility in in the pipe. It's plastic, so you really have to loosen both sides for it to come off. Um, after that, I removed the throttle body, and that was just these four bolts holding the throttle body together along with an electrical connector which connects here and that was just simply just pinch the sides pull it out and it was quite easy um, so and these uh, screws aren't torqued very well so um, it's so they're not they're very easy to um, to, uh, to loosen so that was um, simple also um, just to be uh, mindful that there's um, uh, a pipe holder um, this clip here just to make sure they don't lose that I've kept it on the throttle body and that simply keeps one of these small pipes I believe it's this one um, or maybe there's a different one but it just clips onto the uh, throttle body okay um, so after I had those two removed the next thing I did was I removed the uh, the fan for the intercooler and the fan basically has a clip which sits in in here and that just needs to be pressed on the inside and then just upwards and once you do that it's just a matter of um, just lifting the top part out and then sliding it up um, and basically you have these two plastic um, uh, pieces that go into the intercooler uh, down here and um, yeah in there and one on this side and uh, once you do that, the uh, the fan is out, and also there's a connector here for the fan. Um, and this wasn't too difficult to take out, so it's quite simple. I took this one out. Okay, once I'd taken this out, I then had to um, remove the intercooler, which is literally behind it. So once you take that out, you have the intercooler. Now the intercooler was a little bit more difficult, um, as you have. Um, these uh, four sides and they basically sit on top of this plastic unit so if you can imagine this plastic unit basically goes here something like that then you have the intercooler on top of it followed by the fan so once you remove the fan you can then actually get access to the plastic part um, and these side clips basically fit onto the um, the intercooler onto the sides and the way to release it is if you look on the uh, side of the plastic you have this middle bit you have to push it on the inside from the side at the same time just pull the intercooler upwards um, just gently pry it because the thing is uh, over time this plastic becomes quite hard so um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't break any uh, any of the plastic pieces and I didn't I was quite successful in doing that so I removed the intercooler a little bit of wiggling and you know just moving it sideways and it just it just came out 
And also, yes, there was a, a second pipe which connects here and I believe that goes to the air filter. And that had uh, one of these rubber plastic uh, which was connecting both the um, air filter and the other pipe off for the um, intercooler. So once the intercooler was out, I, w I then had to remove the plastic bit. Now the important bit I want to just point out is that you cannot take this plastic bit out unless you follow a, an important step which I didn't cover in the previous video. And uh, what that is, is that if you look on the back of this plastic, um, here um, you have these two, um, these two holes there. And there's a separate piece of plastic from underneath the car that clips onto, that basically links up to that and just pushes in and you have to release that plastic panel. Um, and there's three um, three points where it gets connected. Uh, one is, is on this side, one on the other side, and the third one is a small white uh, clip, which I um, should have stored here, yeah. So it's just this push on uh, plastic thing and that goes on to the panel that is under uh, that is released from underneath the car so once you've done that I mean that has to be done before you even start jacking the car up so that's and I had already done that but I just didn't record it so so that's an important part and because I'd already done that this plastic panel only required uh, release from the top and um, this plastic panel is held by two screws, uh, two bolts. Uh, one is uh, he on this side, and again, you have to once you've taken the intercooler off, you you can actually uh, you can remove that bolt. And the second one is here. So that's the second one, and the first one you can probably see the hole now. In the, um, if you look here, yeah, there's the hole. So that's the um, the house, the plastic housing. Once I'd done that, um, this one sits into a metal piece which is um, down here, um, just there, uh, there, and that's not holding anything, it's just sitting on top of the, the metal part and you just pry a little bit and it just gets released. Once that's done, this plastic bit comes out. Now, at this point, um, I started lowering the engine. Uh, and one of the lessons I've learned here is that I think it would have been worthwhile actually lowering the engine on one side before I started removing these parts because um, it would have been a little bit more easier, I think, to take the parts out. But I think, I guess it's the first time I'm doing it, so um, you can do it in any order. Um, but I, I think now that I've learned that I will actually lower the side of the uh, the engine before I actually take these parts out. So these are all the parts I've taken out. Uh, these are some of the rings um, that were uh, basically holding the pipes together. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, the other thing is when you take this plastic housing out, plastic housing out, there's a, a cable tie which you have to cut. And that's okay because the cables tie simply goes through this so you can put a new one through this and tie the pipe and that's basically these wires pipe that actually holds it in place uh, that's all it is so you just replace with new cable tie okay so uh, what else can I actually share so um, yeah so the Basically, these are all the different sets of bolts that I've actually removed, and the the four more important ones that I want to actually share about that, which I haven't recorded in the previous video, are um, these two here. And these are basically the uh, the top um, bolts for, so the bolts for the engine mount. And if you look here, I have now removed the um, the uh, engine mount. And because I removed the two bolts, the engine has actually um, um, basically sunk down on one side. And that's given me a lot more space to work with uh, at the top. So um, just to keep the video short, I'm just going to stop here and then I'll resume further notes on the next video.